want to talk about a little bit about professional writing and professional writing, especially in the context of ESRM. So just as a reminder, when you guys are doing this, I'm not in the room. When I'm reviewing it, when I'm reading it, when whatever your audience that you're targeting is, is consuming this uh, material. Um, so when we write, you don't have any of the body language. I think sometimes you guys are writing as if I'm in the room with you and you're having a more conversational discussion with me and, and we're shooting for something different. You don't have that body language. It's relatively easy to be misunderstood if you're not super clear. Um, the advantage of writing, one of the reasons I give you guys take home exams and we do so much writing in this class and all of our ESRM classes is to get you guys in that habit of constant practice, constant practice. And in most cases, that gives you a wide palette to utilize, right? You guys can, you're not, not constrained typically by the 100 words here or 50 words there. And so you should use that high level of detail. Um, and, and yeah, that potentially infinite space and temporal audience, that's really more for things like our research papers and stuff that other people are gonna see outside of our classroom potentially. Um, another key thing for you guys is remember that this is read alone. When you guys are answering a question for me, when you're doing a write-up about a reading summary, whatever, you, you can't expect that the reader has necessarily uh, been through class with us or been through the lab activity with us or whatever. So you have to remember that this is an autonomous um, piece from whatever the other material is. And if properly done, and with some formatting tricks that you guys are welcome to use whenever you do writing, um, you can actually help the audience uh, navigate your material um, that much more easily. Um, what makes something good? It's, it's hopefully your writing is interesting, although a lot of times that's constrained by me because I give you boring topics, right? But, but in general, you guys want to take a, a, an attack on that that is engaging. Um, it should be rigorous and scholarly. Right? In the case of our class this semester, you guys have all the stuff to choose from. You have all the readings, all the writings, etc. You guys don't seem to be doing that too much. You seem to be focusing on one or two factoids or one or two sources and just going with that. This is your opportunity to show that, um, especially in an examination context, you guys are um, understanding the whole of whatever the topic that we're talking about is. Um, if, you're, if you're describing something like an experiment, it should be reproducible enough. You should give us enough detail to reproduce it. And that goes same with your arguments. So if you're saying something like X is happening that, that um, I don't know, that we're gonna have a lot of erosion happening in our hills, by building your argument, you're not necessarily doing an experiment with this paper, but by doing your argument, we should be able to um, examine that and in a sense mentally reproduce that in other contexts to see where your ideas might apply uh, elsewhere. As always, should be clear and succinct, good logical structure, um, and ideally, even if it's a test question, even if it's a reading summary, um, a well-written uh, piece of um, analysis should also give new insights. Hey, so, so um, this is what you asked me about, and I think A, B, C, and D. Maybe E's going on, don't know, but you know, that kind of thing. And then uh, lastly, uh, your, your if it's especially in the context of some of your research, et cetera, some of the new stuff you're doing, writing about polls, doing your capstone, whatever, should inspire people to the next step. So here's some common examples that um, I see, not just you guys in this class, but in general, right? The first is just cr cruddy writing, bad writing, right? You gotta fix that. Um, the problem with crappy writing, especially as you guys are getting ready to go out in the crazy new world that is our world now, um, is that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a poor thinker, but that's what people will take away from it. If you're a crappy communicator, people will take away that you're a crappy thinker and you're, you're, you're not smart, right? And you guys are smart. You just need to, in many cases, do a better job at communicating what you know. Um, uh, so the other thing that, that crappy writing translates to is, is muddled arguments. So, so, so it's hard to understand what you're trying to say because you're arguing things from both sides or not taking a clear point. And again, we wanna be really clear and really um, uh, make a strong argument about whatever that argument happens to be. And of course, we gotta get rid of all the bad grammar and misspellings and stuff. Um, I have some suggestions for that later in a second. Um, another common problem with you guys, and this is also just you guys being young, but um, it's 
it's sometimes way too intensive, right? You're, you're, you're just, um, you're speaking with a level of extremeness that isn't necessarily justified. So the classic examples you guys use a lot of these modifier words like hugely and very and extremely and incredibly and amazing and unbelievably and awesome and tremendously. These are the most common ones I see in your guys' writing. So generally speaking, you should uh, delete those, right? So in almost every case, it doesn't hurt your argument and usually makes it stronger to take, to take those modifiers out. Um, and, and, uh, and again, we're striving for obje objectivity here. Even if I say, if it, even if we're talking about a test question where I say, hey, are you for this, right? Uh, by being so over the top, that um, suggests weakness in many cases in your arguments. The data, the evidence, the examples you put forth should be the convincing thing. Not you saying, this is the best answer ever, right? It's better to write out the best answer ever. Um, uh, next one is that uh, sometimes you guys, uh, when you assert something, it's too general. And, and um, I, I, like I said before, it's good for you guys to start general, that's okay, but then you want to go to the specific. And sometimes you guys are asserting, ge making general statements and not, not providing the detail uh, underneath it. So for example, here is like saying something like, uh, marine protected areas work. And then going on with some other something else, and this whoa, 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 okay, I, I get it. You, you're arguing that they work. Cool. The next sentence, period, new sentence. It should say, hey, here's this study that showed this. Here's that study that showed that, etc. Right. So building that strong argument, and in particular, in particular, you guys need to be citing the evidence for that. Citing, unless you guys did the work yourself, you need to cite the lecture, the reading sample, the, the, the guest speaker that talked to us about that, whatever it is, cite that, and specific numbers. So don't say, um, marine protected areas worked. Say, marine protected areas worked, boom. For example, we saw a 20% increase in biomass in La Paz. We saw a 13% rise in the reproductive rate uh, in the Anacapa Reserve off Channel Island, that kind of stuff, right? So start with the general. I'm not saying don't ever say general statements, but don't leave general statements uh, hanging by themselves. Um, so I just said I want you guys to be succinct and, and you know tight and everything, but uh, there's also being too tight. And so I, I was, I'm not trying to slander anyone here, but <laughs> I'm not. I, I think I think unfortunately our, our new president elect might become a great example going into the future of how being um, too succinct is, is a problem, maybe, right? Since, at least as of right now, the major way that he appears to be communicating with the American public is through 140 character tweets, right? And so, in some cases, that might be appropriate for the kind of writing you guys do and argumentation for ESRM that is, generally speaking, not appropriate, right? You should be able to boil down your thoughts into a short, pithy statement, but, but that uh, short, pithy statements do not make a strong argument in and of themselves. Um, and so uh, one thing I see fairly common in, in this class in uh, conservation biology and other classes that we have a lot of writing in is sometimes, especially, and this is not, not so much in, in reading summaries types of context, but more when you guys are tight, when you're time constrained. And so this is most common when you guys have, you know, an, an essay or something like that, that that's, that's due in a day. Um, is that there's a tendency to barf out, idea, barf out words rather than ideas, right? And so um, don't just use the, the buzzword to insert in your argument. Actually, we're working on ideas and arguments, uh, first and foremost. Um, and then another key thing is remember, I, I'm not a jerk. I hope, to, I hope I'm not a jerk to you guys. I try not to be a jerk. <laughs> but, but you always need to assume that I'm skeptical of what you're saying, right? So you need to, and I'm not a jerk skeptic, skeptic, I'm just a prove it to me skeptic, right? So again, just like that thing that we're, I'm not in the room, we're not writing this as we're all hearing the same lecture, right? It's, it's, it's separate, it's autonomous. You guys also need to remember to put that in the back of your mind. Saying something like, marine protected areas work, maybe they do, maybe they don't, right? You need to prove to me that they work. I'm not an antagonistic person, I'm not trying to bring you down not working for the coal lobby or something like that. But really, 
Are you sure? Prove it, right? And you prove that by having strong arguments and well, well evidenced uh, lines of reasoning. Another common thing you guys do is uh, have over-reliance on one particular reference. So here, here's my argument I'm building, blah, 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 and then here's this Smith 1999 reference. Cool, great. And then here's another specific thing. Here's Smith 1999. Ah, OK. Use Smith 99, cool, twice. And then there's another sentence, Smith 1999. Whoa, wait, what? So there's nothing wrong with using a particular reference, but overuse is a really common thing that you guys tend to do, right? So again, if it's the appropriate reference, by all means use it. But that's also saying, that's all, you're also telling me that the whole story is summed up in this one person's uh, uh, paper or talk or whatever it is, right? And usually that's not the case. Usually there's other things, but you guys just happen to have found that one. You're like, oh my god, fine, fine, let me throw it in here. Um, and so, right, so it's a difference between, oh, I found something that has to do with this, I'm going to use it, versus, ah, I get the big picture. And this is one piece of a bigger puzzle. Um, again, uh, the, uh, commonly, this notion of unsubstantiated statements, we already mentioned this, but again, lack of references, lack of specific numbers. Um, and I know you guys aren't doing this, but in general, this is the technique used by people that are out to deceive folks. And this is commonly used. There's a lot about this out now about fake news, right? And that, that kind of stuff. A lot of that is, uh, a lot of those are statements that are not backed up and, uh, and are, are, are written in a way that they imply that they're real, but they're really not. Uh, and another one, you guys, have, I talked with some of you guys before about this, but pretty much you guys should never use clauses. Is it <laughs> clauses are totally legal and totally grammatically correct, potentially. But by and large, you guys cannot, you don't, you don't know how to use them. You guys use them as if we're, we're having a conversation. And so you say, you know, blah, 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 comma, blah, 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 comma, blah, blah, blah. Generally, nah, don't. So I know for almost all you guys where you would put a clause, go ahead and have that idea, but just put period, boom, and then start a new sentence. And uh, <coughs> while that's, that's, of course, you can use clause as well, my rule of thumb for you guys, don't use them. Don't use them. That usually causes issues. Um, and then sometimes, not a lot of you guys, but some of you guys, um, an inability to use some of the, the cool formatting functions. Um, so some of you guys are treating our word processors like typewriters. And as someone has used typewriters, they're way better than typewriters, right? So, so don't say C, capital C, capital O, number two. C, capital C, capital O, subscript two, right? Subscript, superscript, italicization, those things. Not hard, not, not hard. If you guys are having problems, come up, bug me or bug anyone and say, hey, how, do you, how did you do this? How did you make that, that character? How did you do the, the uh, degree sign, you know, if we're talking about degrees Fahrenheit or something? And use that. Use the full power of, of these cool modern um, tools that we have. Um, and then related to that, also, you guys should use all the skills, all the cool tools you have in your word processor. So this applies for anything, capstone writing, whatever. It's never a bad thing to use formatting to, re, uh, to, to, to support the concepts. Support the con the formatting doesn't substitute for that, but it can really help. So if you're, if you're given a, an answer, let's say it's four parts, pff, do the first part, maybe do a little you know, title and bold it or whatever, use a, use a heading and then put your answer, that paragraph in there. And the next one, use a heading, boom, put your answer in there for the, the second heading, and then boom. So do that sometimes, maybe, maybe I, bolding a, a key phrase or something like that. Um, you, you can go overboard here, but in general, you guys aren't using at all formatting to help support your organization and stuff. And you should realize that's a total cool thing to do. It's not bad to do that. Um, in general, uh, fairly common, that uh, sort of along with those very and extremely and da da da, those modifier words, also there's a tendency for you guys to say that everything is like this, right? And so maybe, but oftentimes that's not the case. It's usually one facet of a larger thing. And, and related to that, a lot of times you guys aren't bringing in the general theory that we've talked about or, or general examples or core concepts. So again, you're sort of stuck in one little facet of the story and you're not uh, getting outside of that. 
Um, one of the biggest things is you guys are just are rushing. God knows I'm a victim of that, right? I'm, I'm way overcommitted. The rushing generally leads to really bad or no revision. And you guys are just barfing out words and it's super obvious because there's repeated words oftentimes. There's random, uh, you know, uh, open parentheses and no closed parentheses, that kind of stuff. So, so um, yeah, right, good. Uh, I think I already talked about this. Okay. This is, this is supposed to be funny. I know you guys don't think it's funny, but this is supposed to be funny. So, so some examples of things to do. You should avoid cliches like the plague. That's funny. <laughs> it's supposed to be funny. Um, parenthetical remarks, however inappropriate, are usually unnecessary, right? Same thing goes for clauses. Um, uh, also, too, never use repetitive redundancies. There's, there's sometimes you guys, so this is what's going on, and then two seconds later, this is what's going on, and it's the same, same thing, like, hmm. So, so work on that. Um, and when we do PowerPoints, when we do posters, totally cool to use sentence fragments. But in your submitted stuff, never use sentence fragments. Um, uh, don't be redundant. Do not use more words than you have to. It's highly superfluous. Ha! Wasn't that funny? I see I'm, I totally have you guys in a great mood today. That's good. Um, don't use no double negatives. Right? One word sentences, eliminate them. Uh, elim and then here's the clause thing. Eliminate commas that are not necessary. Exaggeration is a billion times worse than understatement. That's more of that extreme modifier thing. Um, and, the, and finally, proffred carefully to, uh, to see if you, any words out. See? Perfect, right there. Okay. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate that this is something we all do, right? There's nothing magical about Dr. Rodriguez, Dr. Steele, Dr. Patch, myself. We just, we've been where you guys are. It's all about rewriting, whether that's a capstone thing or about your, you, you know, a test thing you're submitting or even a reading summary. Right? Look at it again. Don't turn anything in raw. Review it. And so this is an example of a paper. What paper is this? Uh, this is a paper I think you guys read this semester. Um, and uh, we, I think we had 19 drafts of this paper before we were done. Right? 19, like fully starting, looking, going through the whole stuff, changing sentences. It's just, that's how it works. That's how it works. So. Um, the fact that you guys are under a time constraint maybe and writing something and get it out and boom and done, it's not surprising there's going to be errors in there. But you should build in some time to at least do at least one quick pass. And if it's something significant like an exam or something, you guys should plan to do a couple of those. Okay? It's not magic. It's just going back over those things. And so this is uh, something I've used in a lot of other classes. So everybody rewrites. Everybody rewrites. And who's this? Obama at, with his uh, health care um, speech. Um, and and this, is, this is probably, I don't know, the 30th or 40th time he's looked at it, and he still has comments, right? He still changes this up, delete that, move that around, right? Uh, trying to make uh, an effective argument, trying to make a strong argument for, uh, in this case, some legislation that he, he wanted to, to talk about, right? Um, so resources, you, ha you have a ton of resources to help you with this stuff, right? And I want to make sure you guys understand that these resources are always available to you. They're available to you in this class. They're available to you if you're in a biology class. They're available to you whenever, wherever, okay? So you should use these. Um, and so first we have our ESM writing guide, which is a section of the uh, Channel Islands writing guide. There's formatting suggestions in there. There's, writing, there's some writing examples. There's more I'm putting in there for you guys. But there's that. That's online. Um, there's our, um, what used to be called our writing center that now is a multi-literacy center slash multimedia. I think the name is changing, but, but it's in Broome Library. They are not, generally speaking, technical writers. So sometimes they give you guys at the, at the higher level argumentation. They maybe aren't so great. But they are great for helping you catch just basic grammatical errors, basic you know, some formatting things. They are, they are helpful for that. So I would, I would still consider going by and talk with those guys. Another one that, I, that uh, I've, I've been resistant to suggesting you guys do this, but I think, um, I think it's gotten a lot better in the last two and a half years, 
It's this a company a website, Grammarly.com. Does anybody use them? And what do you guys think? It's good. Helpful? Yeah. Helpful? Yeah. Helpful? And you guys did the version where you just submitted text or you actually downloaded the thing and did like Word, full Word documents and stuff? What do you guys do? Just uh, submit text. Yeah. Submit text? Yeah. Like, like snippets? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And anybody else use it? Andy, what would you think? I loved it. I used it for everything now. I wish I got it at the beginning of the semester. Okay. Okay, cool. And who else? Phil say, what do you think? I like it. I think you like the add-in version. The plug into Word, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And Laura? Yeah, so, you know, it costs some money, but one of the things that I like about this is it doesn't just go wrong, right? It says, hey, this is wrong, and if you choose that option, why is it wrong, right? It sort of says, hey, it's wrong because of this, and here's some possible fixes for it, right? So it's not just some kind of automatic fixer. It's trying to help you guys get better with your, with your argument, with your writing at least. <coughs> Cool. So, um, so consider that. I think there's. They used to have a seven or fourteen day free trial, and then and then if you want to use it longer term, these things are going on. What I notice is they tend to come out with the discounts around now. They come out with the discounts right before school starts, school year starts, and they come out with promotional stuff right around the end of semester when most people have research papers due in classes. Um, so there's, you can, you can do a sort of as you go, or you can do a monthly subscription, or there's a lot of different versions. So um, I, I would, everybody like you guys, everybody I've, I've asked that's used it, everybody seems to like it. So it does cost some money, but I think it is a useful tool that can help, again, not catch everything, but catch some of the more basic fundamental stuff. Um, and then other things, roommates, classmates, you can use each other. On our take home exams, you can't use each other. But everything else, you can use each other, right? And you guys should. You should swap emails. You should, you know, hey, we want to talk about this um, in this class and beyond. You can talk to me, other faculty. And then you guys also have you. So don't forget that you have you. The problem is you are stuck in writing this when you have one hour to do this and then you got to get it done and go on. You are a resource for you. Oh, that's an interesting sentence. You are a resource for you if you have a chance to mentally break your association with this piece of writing. So there's different ways to do that. You could take a breath and go outside and when it's really cold or really hot and whatever and this and that. Um, my dad's a painter, an, an oil painter, and the way he breaks his view is he has a giant mirror. He has a giant, uh, 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 well, not, not ballroom mirror, I don't know what you call it, but a, a mirror that's like you know, like six foot tall mirror. And he paints, 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 paints for a while. Then he goes, mm, is this balanced or whatever? And he's been so focused on painting the sun or coastline or whatever. It's like, did I really get it? So he stands back and he looks into the mirror and the mirror reverses the image and he sees a fresh perspective. Like, oh my God, this thing is too high. This thing is too low. This is too orange. This is too blue, whatever. So that kind of thing. So you have to find out what works best for you. And, so, and one of the easiest ones is to read backwards, right? Start at the bottom of your paragraph or re reading sample and read that last sentence and then read the second to the last sentence and the third to the last sentence, etc. And um, hard in that case to really get some of the argument, say are you making the good strong arguments, but it's great to catch a lot of the formatting errors or the spelling errors or stuff like that. Um, the best thing of course is to put it away for a day or two, right? We don't always have that luxury, but, but the best thing is to put it away and then you come at it fresh, right? You come at it fresh. So those are all resources for you guys and you should use any or all of them uh, for anything. And again, the goal is to, so one of our graduates is just, I guess, going to be here in an hour or so. She's in graduate school back east, and she was just recently telling me, oh my god, you should make the students write more. Write, make them write more, make them write more, make them write more. Because uh, in many cases, the jobs you guys will do when you graduate are going to involve a, a relatively, surprisingly to most of you, high level of writing, right? Write this report. Why is this thing endangered? What did you sample? What did, so um, she's, she says, you got to make these guys write more, write more, write more, because this is when they can get feedback. When she's at her job or she's in grad school or she's whatever, it's, it's um, harder to, to get that. Okay, having said that, let's practice! What? You guys are so excited. All right, great. Casey, pass those out. Everybody grab one. Grab a pen. And let's practice some editing real quickly here. I know you guys, what was that sigh? That was an audible sigh that you guys seemed as if you weren't excited to work on editing. Stop this thing, stop. Okay.
What do you guys think of this piece of writing? Um, generally, I think they needed a lot more detail. Okay. And there's no numbers, just statistics. Okay, so it needed more de need to be more specific with some of their, their evidence. Good. And then, I'm sorry, what was the other one? Okay. Citations. Okay, good. No, no citations at all. They use a lot of nearly, rapidly. Right. Right. Um, there's a lot of spaces that, like at the bottom, with the ever increasing. It's like a double space. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So the space. That's an interesting one. So, so, it's okay to do two spaces or one space. Either is acceptable. We used to always do two spaces because it it just made it easier to read. Um, I tend to think two spaces make it easier to read, but most programs now just go to one space. It doesn't so much matter as long as you're consistent. The issue is inconsistency. So one space is okay, two spaces is okay, but not mixing the two as they do here. Okay, good. What else? Yeah. Okay, right, and so to support Danielle's argument, if there were specific facts, that would be something different that you would get rather than just driving down the road, right? You'd say, okay, this is happening, but then this is happening at 200 times faster or 17 meters a year or something. Assuming the person reading this doesn't know, um, there's no indication of what coast this person's talking about. Okay, good, good, fair enough, good. They said a lot like, although the evidence is clear, they're not really telling you what the evidence yes. is. Yes, yes. And then they said one example of this was a man. Like, who's right. a man? Right. Expand on that. Again, the, again you got to expect that the reader is not in your head next to you, and you guys aren't. We're at the theater together watching a movie, and we're talking about the movie where we're both seeing the same thing. You have to make everything clear, everything explicit. They use the word thing, too. Thing? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, good. Right? Right? Greg? The clauses you were saying that should be in there for the second sentence. Between sea level rise and the form of comma. Good. I think it's just eliminate between to start with sea level rise and increase the density of storms has increased the rate of erosion. Right, exactly. Right. So so that's the being being more succinct, right? That we can sometimes we think that, oh, more, more words will make stuff more clear. Sometimes it does. More often than not, it, it clouds, or, or hmm. I'll say at this stage, when you guys are still learning to be writers, a lot of times it, it, it acts to get in the way of your ideas. Right? So if you, can, if you can get rid of some of those, it seems as if, delete that. Someone once said, delete that, All right? Um, uh, it's really obvious when you look at delete that, right? Th th those are just fluff, fluff things, right? We want to be boom to the point and boink, get there. Okay, good. Anything else, Greg, you were going to say? No, just with that, make that one sentence and then cite that and then why. So Greg would start with sea level rise, would start with right here with a, a capitalized S, sea level rise and an increase in intensity of storms. Has increased. The rate and then delete all this, open has open. increased. Okay, good. Okay. Same with the value of these homes. Sorry, which one, which one is that? Which one are you looking at? Um, like, halfway through, further down. Oh, yeah, okay, right, yeah. It's not really that right. Deal, but like right. Like right. 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 Same with the first sentence. Right. California's coastline, it's about length, long, and consistently changing. Instead of saying the nearly 1,000. And when you make those changes, right, so, so let's assume that the logic is all fine here. Even just making those deletions and adding in more specific numbers is going to make this seem a million times stronger, a million times better, right? So it's not necessarily that this person has to go read 17 more books or whatever, right? They clearly understand the issues. They just haven't done a good job of communicating it, right? And that's, that's, that's what I want to make sure you guys are, are working on, that, that, you know, in all these classes, we're both learning stuff, but we're also getting these skills and, and writing is a, is a skill that we, we just have to practice. There's no other way, but you got to practice. So let's not let bad writing get in the way of your guys' cool ideas and your guys' cool thoughts. Good. Any other, any other big comments you guys have on this one?
They just need to stop jumping around the bush and just say what they want to say. There you go. Right, yeah. So that's a lot of that fluff, that extra extra packing, uh, uh, extra wordiness that doesn't say anything. Right? If those extra words are telling us something new, giving us some insight, cool. If they're just acting to fill up space, <clears throat> cut them out. Cool? All right. Let's try one more. And this is going to be our quiz for today. <coughs> so I'm going to give you guys another quiz. All right? Remember, we dropped the lowest quizzes, so don't freak out. But what I want you to do, I want you to edit this next one. So here's the next one. 